So in this video, we're going to go over a step-by-step -step tutorial on DistroKid and how you start from scratch, taking your finished song and getting it on live on all the music streaming services available that DistroKid offers. If you have a DistroKid account, great, we can get started right away. If you don't have a DistroKid account, that's okay. There is a link in the description where I can offer you a discount. So I'll put that there, you can get started and we can go through this tutorial. So we're going to go to this top link here, upload and click upload. And from this page, we're going to go top to bottom and fill out all the information that we can. And at the end of that page, we'll be ready to go and have our music uploaded. So the first thing is just choosing the music services that you want your music available to. By default, DistroKid will have these all clicked for you already. And that's because most of the time people want their music everywhere available. I recommend just leaving these all clicked unless you really didn't want your music on Amazon or Pandora, for example. The next question is number of songs. And one of the biggest benefits of DistroKid is you pay $20 annually recurring. So you will pay $20 a year, but you can upload as many songs as you want. So you can go and upload 35 songs right now if you choose. Uh, in this case, we'll just say we're uploading one. The previous released question is important. Um, some, most of the time it wouldn't be previous released, but if your song is already on Spotify, for example, you're going to want to make sure the ISRC code is the same so that you're not duplicating any ISRC codes that are to the same track. The artist name is really important and this is where you will type and your name for me, my artist name is Charles Klain. If you already have a Spotify for Artists page, they will recognize your page. So here you can see Apple Music has showed up. Um, there's already one artist named Charles Klain and on Spotify, the same thing. And that happens to be me already. If you have a popular band name or your name maybe isn't that unique, it will just say like Apple Music has already five people under this name and you have to go and click the right name that actually is you and not someone else. So you would say, that's me, for example, and here, that's me there. Continue down. This is the release date question and is only available on the mid-tier package for DistroKid. If you're doing the $20 annual package, you will not be able to choose a release date. The benefit of choosing the mid-tier package is that you can choose a release date and we can also put a custom record label name down. If you don't have this, that's okay, but you just won't be able to say, I want my song to be released on June 16th, 2020. And that way you can plan, you can schedule your social posts and tell, tell your whole audience that the song is going to be out on June 16th. This is the same thing for release time and the record label. We are now able to choose, I can say that my record label is Charles Klain. And that just looks good on your Spotify for Artists, Apple Music pages. If not, it will say released by DistroKid. That's fine, but if you want to have a clean look, it's nice to have a custom record label name. The next thing is album cover, and this is just a simple upload of your album artwork. It is recommended to be, actually it almost has to be 3,000 by 3,000 pixels. If it's not, I think Apple Music will, won't accept it. They're very particular about their artwork and the size and the pixels of their artwork. So make sure it's at least, I think, 1500 by 1500. Better to go with 3000 by 3000 pixels, which is a perfect square. Language, primary genre, secondary genre. These are important fields to fill out because this is actually the genres that Apple Music gives tags to. So if you choose big band genre, but you're actually in pop, well, you're gonna be in the big band genre in Apple Music. Now we're getting into the track information, which is really important and you don't wanna make any mistakes here. There are some requirements here that you can read over. For example, I'll put one of my songs that I'll be releasing soon called Don't Start Now. I'll spell it correctly, because that's really important. But if you have a featured artist, or for example, if you're, there's some capitalization requirements, just read over them. DistroKid won't um, accept the title if it's not within their requirements. The next step is the audio file and you want to be uploading at minimum a 16-bit audio file. Whoever is mastering your track should give you at least up to a 24-bit, hopefully, audio file, WAV file that you can upload here from your finder or browser windows. And this is also the section mentioned previously if you already have an IRC 
ISRC code from before uploading it to Spotify. If that's in your case, you can put that ISR ISRC code down right here. Next section is important. You, if it is a cover song, make sure you do clarify that it is a cover song. If not, it's just an original song. And then here you can give credit to the artist. Maybe you have a co-writer on the lyrics or you had a producer, you can add their names here. And that will show up on the streaming services as well and will give them credit. This doesn't have to do with like the share of earnings that they get. That's just giving them shout out credit. Explicit lyrics, obviously, if there's swearing and stuff, make sure you put yes. Um, if this is a radio edit, make sure you put yes or no. Instrumental, obviously, if this is super simple, yes or no. Uh, preview clip start time. So this is helpful if you, especially for TikTok, Apple Music and iTunes, um, they have that 30 second preview where you can get, and if your 30 seconds at the intro of the song is really slow, maybe don't put that, choose the highest dynamic, mo most energetic, interesting part of the song here that you want people to see so they come back for more. You can also put the track price in iTunes, you can, and Google Play and Amazon, making it cheaper or more expensive depending on how you want. There are some cool extras here. Some of them are free. Uh, actually, this Instagram and Facebook one is free, and I, so I do recommend putting that because you'll be able to have your music in the Instagram stories. There are other extras that are paid. Um, YouTube money, if you want that YouTube content ID monet monetization, so if someone else makes a vlog video and puts your song in their video, then DistroKid will help you get paid for that video. They will send the ad revenue to your DistroKid account. However, they will be taking 20% of that and charging you about $5 a year. So if you think people are going to be using your music a lot for YouTube videos, then this is a recommended service to have. There's some other ones, Store Maximizer. That's just saying like if new stores come into play, then they'll automatically add your song to these stores. Shazam and iPhone, that is a really good one, I think, that you should add. If you think people will be out hearing your song on the radio or on the coffee shop on a playlist, they shazam your song, you're, you're gonna wanna show up there so they follow up with you. So that's 99 cents a year, which these last checkboxes are one necessary to click, making sure that you understand all the terms and conditions and that you know what's happening. And then you click done and your music will be uploaded to these music streaming services in a matter of two to five days. So the next section in this tutorial is talking about some of the other features and settings within DistroKid and what it looks like. So we can talk about this navigation here. We're back in the My Music page. Here we have the upload page, which we've already uploaded a song. The team section is a cool feature that DistroKid offers, which is one of the only music distributing services. A couple others offer it as well, but DistroKid offers payment splitting between your co-writers or anyone else involved in the song, which is really valuable. The only thing is they also have to have a DistroKid account. So great if they already do. DistroKid makes it super easy when a payment comes in and they will split the payments, the royalty payments between each of the, the writer, the co-writer, the producer, whoever is involved. And, you will set the percentages for each person and then they split them easily. The stats section at the top here is stats and what streams you have from what music streaming service. I do find though that their stats page is a bit limited. Most of the music distributors anyways have delayed data. Their user interface, like the experience of actually looking at a graph is just not very pleasant um, compared to looking at your Spotify analytics on the Spotify for Artists page, or even the Apple Music for Artists page. So I rarely, I rarely ever spend my time in the DistroKid statistics page. The upgrade section is where you can find out more information of the higher tiered plans. Um, for me, I'm on the Musician Plus plan, but if you want, if you have your own label, or if you have 10 or more artist names yourself, then you would want to go up to the label plan. And if you don't care about custom release dates or custom record label names, and you just want to upload music, get it online, then the musician plan at 20 bucks a year is the right plan for you. Bank section is obviously the coolest section and that's where you get paid and where you make your money and where you see your money coming in from. So you can see a breakdown by store here and where all the money is coming in from, from each specific store. Keep in mind there is a two or three month delay and that's notified at the top here 
from where the money is coming in from each store. So if you want a payday, all you have to do is withdraw earnings, set up the banking information of where you want the money routed to, and then it will land in your bank account. The more section here is showing the different features that DistroKid offers, and I'll go over some of the ones that I think are cool. Um, simply this hyper follow link is great. It's a custom link for you with your song that you're about to release that has all the music streaming services that you choose on that link. So if your song, my song for example, was called Don't Start Now, I can put this link, share it on Instagram or Facebook or wherever and send all the traffic to this link. Then the person that lands on this link can choose I have Spotify, so I want, I want to listen to this song on Spotify, but if I'm an Apple Music listener, I can choose Apple Music. If I'm on YouTube Music, I can choose YouTube Music. You get the idea. It's a great um, free feature that DistroKid offers with their service. Um, Fixer is another thing. If you do have what I was mentioning, like your name is maybe popular and a lot of the times you upload music and it ends up on another person's account, not yours, you can use the fixer setting where it is quick and easy to change that back to your actual account. Um, lastly, in the settings section, the referral program is really cool. And that's the link I have in my description as well, which is just giving people a discount to sign up. And then in turn, I get paid and you can go and have your own referral link as well and share that with your friends. They get a discount and then you get paid in return. So a cool little program that is available to anyone who signs up for DistroKid. That's what DistroKid looks like. It is super simple. So I hope you found this video useful. If you are thinking of going with DistroKid, feel free to use that discount link in the description that I have. And please feel free to subscribe too and check out my own music. I have all my music available on Spotify, Apple Music, all the music streaming services too. So I hope to see you in the next video.